Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Guitar Souls podcast. I am one of your hosts. I'm, in fact, I am the host that is not suffering from an existential hangover crisis, Mr. Levi Clay, and I am here with my good friend, Mr. Mike McLaughlin. How's it going, bud? I am on a different plane of existence. <laughs> I have transcended, but the wrong way. I'm not going up, I've gone down. So that's de- descended, you've descended. Yes, but I said transcended, I didn't say ascended. Sure. Okay, fair point. Smart arse. Uh, I am, I'm actually not too bad. However, I, uh, I made the, the grand mistake of having some beers yesterday and I've realised that two years of not going to the pub regularly equals that I cannot really drink anymore. <laughs> it's fine maybe having a, like a whiskey or two with you and be a wee bit half cotton up the road, but six pints and I was being sick in all sorts. We uh, were at a kilt fitting for a friend's wedding, sure. which resulted in the pub for a few hours. We're only there for two hours for yeah. lockdown reasons. No. No. Tra- tragic i'll be honest just tragic old man pa how are See, you well when you started telling me this story and you were like six beers in i'm like seems like a good warm-up to the night because boy when i go out do i drink <laughs> i'm too old for it i just can't i can't deal with hangovers yeah <laughs> just can't i guess for you like the the problem of dealing with hangovers hangovers is you have a family that you have to engage with be part of you no i can ignore them wife. i just hate feeling ill <laughs> nancy uh, take over if I make it out alive, I'll say sorry. Yeah, because uh, I just lock myself in my room and play PlayStation all day and mm-hmm. eat fast food to make myself feel better. But, oh uh, man, like if we went to Burger King earlier on, we went a walk and went to Burger King and I was feeling a bit better. So the Whopper, hello me fries. I've sorry, I didn't have a Whopper, I'm talking to lies. I just uh, can't believe you went to Burger King you didn't bring me a burger. <laughs> I mean, it was at like two this afternoon. I'd take a, a cold burger. <laughs> I, I would have if I'd realised. I'm sorry, mate. I'll remember next time. I didn't have a Whopper. I'm talking shite. I had a Chicken Royale and Nancy the Vegan one. And then we also had a, what was it? Salted Caramel Golden Oreo Milkshake. And it was essentially nice milkshake, salted caramel flavour, and then Golden Oreos about this deep in the bottom of the, the plastic cup, just totally sticking the straw. But they gave you a straw and a spoon. So come the end of it, I was just eating bits of it. <laughs> and it, it didn't matter how sick I felt, I was like, I'm finishing this, yeah. man. There's no way that a milkshake is beating me when six beers haven't. <laughs> Fuck you. But it was lovely. Really good. So otherwise, I'm okay. Um, still kind of suffering. How are you? I'm just looking up at the... Uh, I've just noticed a massive spider's web going from the roof to the... There's a cheeky wee spider in this studio, and he's been... Uh, I don't like killing spiders, so I'm just going to let him get on with his business. But I will be taking his home, his little house down. You should make an ultimatum with him that he's going to weave you a really cool strap. Otherwise, he has to move out. <laughs> um, but other than that, yeah, I, I'm good, mate. I'm, uh, you know, keeping busy. I finally got the Kiko album done, so that's done. And, of course, now I've just moved on to other things, doing the Murray Pringle album. Uh, I've got someone else that I'll be doing very shortly. We'll talk about them on the show. Uh, no time for anything fun. Just work, work, work. Or um, work and no play. Did you see the picture of the uh, of my new hybrid though? Just the body shot. Yes. Yeah. Very so. nice. Somebody sent me a photo of it. Like, what the fuck has he bought? And I'm like, wait, do you see it? Just <laughs> wait till you see it. Yeah. So uh, if you haven't seen that, I'm not actually even going to put it up on screen. I'm going to encourage you to go on over to my Instagram and check it out because I'm getting close to three thousand followers on Instagram, and I would love it if I could hit that three thousand mark. How many? Because have I, I don't know why I put all this effort into Facebook. I mean, I do love Facebook. Facebook is the is really the place for me. But I've always been aware of that, like, once you hit 5,000 friends on Facebook, that's you. Whereas Instagram, there's no limits. So you mm-hmm. can just engage with as many people as, as you like. And fuck me, I mean, tell me, uh, in, Instagram and, and Facebook and trying to reach people. We don't advertise the podcast on Facebook, really. We have a Facebook page. Mm-hmm. But we're not really, we're never going to push it there because the amount of people that uh, that it limits... You just the stuff just doesn't get seen by anybody. The minute you put a YouTube link into anything in Facebook, it just kills it too. There is no organic reach. So you say that, but then what you would think the the hypothesis, I'm sure, would be that what they want you to do is not put YouTube links. They want you to upload the videos to Facebook, right? No, they want you to pay for the advertising or put them in the comments, which is the other way around it. But it's still yeah, they'll they'll be onto that soon. Yes, because we went down to uh, Venice of the North, the studio in Glasgow. I meant to ask, how did it go? Went really well. Went really well. Got a video of two songs. Um, one of Melissa's originals, Raised by Wolves, one of the new songs from the upcoming solo album, and also a uh, a cover of You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman. Um, That's w- going to be ridiculous. Ridiculous vocal performance. And I can't wait for people to see it. But of course, you won't really get to see it because when you post these things and when you share these things, they just get slammed into oblivion. Like, so... Uh, Venice of the North, the studio, posted one of the videos today to their Facebook page. They wanted to do those first um, so they could try and get a few more likes on their 
a Facebook page and Melissa shared them, etc. And eventually I'm like, okay, cool, I'll share your post. Now I shared that post on my Facebook page. It got two likes. And that means one of two things. It either means loads of people saw it and nobody likes it. <laughs> False. Which I refuse to believe. It's absolutely a case that no one saw it. Because for whatever reason, Facebook don't want people to see the post. And I can't, it's just, it's one of those weird things. I'm sure you, well, I hope you saw the Instagram post that I put up of me and Melissa. I was playing piano and she was screaming over the back of it. I'm doing a Tedeschi uh, Trucks tune. And that's my most popular Instagram video. That just took off. Got thousands of views. Thousands of views. I don't know how because I didn't overly tag it. I didn't mm -hmm. hashtag it with much. It just, for some reason, that people saw that post and they, they enjoyed it. And there's me, like, I got all these comments uh, and on Facebook as well. People going, wow, she's got an amazing voice. And I'm like, I've been telling you this for fucking ages. <laughs> The problem is every time you tell them with a video, it doesn't go through. Like that yeah. is a, a real concern for yeah. musicians and anyone that's in music business mm. alike at the moment for uh, using Facebook for what it's supposed to be used for. You can't really unless you pour money into it. Yeah. So, Dicks. Strange one. Nature of the beast. But, you know, business is going to business and we'll just keep, keep trucking forward with the business side of things. Speaking of business, did you know? I did. This show is brought to you by our friends over at Ormsby Guitars. We want to remind you guys that there is still time to get involved in the upcoming Run 16 guitars. Those include these incredible hypes available in five new colours. That Dragon Burst is absolutely stunning. You can also get your hands on one of the Metal X's, again available in a range of finishes. My personal pick has to be these headless Vs. Absolutely outrageously cool. Imagine one of those in an eight string. I absolutely love these. And finally, the Ando San signature model available in six, seven, and eight string availability. Go and check them out at Ormsby's website right now. This show is also brought to you by our friends over at Rev Amplification, a one-stop shop for all of your tonal needs. Head on over to their website to check out their range of lunchbox amplifiers, both the D20 and G20, 20 watt amplifiers with built-in two notes torpedo technology so you can record direct into your computer. If that doesn't suit, you can also check out one of their highly popular G2, 3 and 4 pedals, giving you that trademark Rev tone in a stomp box. Incredible tones, I use these myself. And finally, you may notice in the back of these videos, a Rev Generator 120, an absolute masterclass in modern electric guitar tones. Check it out at their site now. So as always, a massive thank you to our friends and family over at Ormsby Guitars and Rev Amplification. And as you can see here, we've got some new toys here. Mm -hmm. In fact, I have a little unboxing video, which I'll post in here. Right. Looks like we've got something to open, Mike. Mm -hmm. Get opening. What do you think, guys? Pony? <laughs> I have a suspicion. Mm -hmm. And what are you suspicious of? I think uh, there's a body. I think Gwyneth Paltrow's head's in there. What's in the goddamn box? Oh. 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 oh, even the box is fucking beautiful, isn't it, really? Right. Oh, you're yeah. in the language. Right, get, it, get it open then. Oh. I think the world's biggest pedal's in there. <laughs> <laughs> Bigfoot stop box. <laughs> right. This is mine. You want to open yours first since I got done open the, the big box? Yeah, no, no, yeah. I, I mean, you're going to open them both. Okay, good enough. Are you camera shy? Not the yeah. first time. <laughs> I appear on camera enough. Oh. <laughs> I thought maybe we'd get a wee glimpse here. Get more anti climax because of me. Ooh. That's a nice wee booklet. Ooh. Look at that. Very nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. And the big man makes a beautiful choice as per. Hello. Oh. It's a beauty. Alright, get on this one. <laughs> 
be placing our bets, what I got. That's so beautiful, man. Right, so, you know what I got. I know what you've done, yeah. Do you think anybody else has guessed? No. I didn't think so. <laughs> I've only showed a couple of people. Like a They're assuming the matching version of this, I don't know. They would be wrong. You don't know me well enough. Hmm. Is it matching? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I feel like I'm totally teaser. They want the guy back facing me. <laughs> I mean, I can just have the camera out by this. No, you can't. <laughs> oh, oh, baby. Fucking look at that. Look at that. Happy, absolutely besotted, <laughs> and I haven't even plugged that in yet. Look at this, beautiful man. Big thank you to Derek and the guys over at Rev, Am Rev Amplification. Rev. Rev Amplification. Easy for you to say. Yeah, and of course a massive thank you to all of our wonderful listeners. Uh, we wouldn't be able to keep doing what we're doing without your love and support. So keep watching, and we will be bringing you more some content soon. Soon. Bye. So yeah, that was uh that was fun. The parcels did get delayed. Took them a little bit longer to get here than not than really a delay. Let's be honest. I mean, still it was very fast shipping from yeah. from uh, from Canada, but uh, it was two days for, to to get it through customs, which is still really really impressive. Absolutely. Um, when you consider uh, the global pavlova as melissa always calls it that's that's ongoing <laughs> so um yeah and we've been playing around with them uh i'm sure videos will come um when, once Jesus. i get tones dialed in i am absolutely going to be recording some stuff yeah. because the fucking racket out of these yeah, wee yeah. things man the gain out of them <laughs> yeah it's just um uh, it's, it's really astonishing like uh, i when when they turned up beautiful little packages as you as you saw in that video um i showed it to melissa i was like so this is the this is the lunch box lunch box amps i got and she went oh yeah they're, they're small they're really cute i like them they'd be really handy for for gigging she was like but are they that loud are they going to be loud enough for something and i was like i think so yeah yeah <laughs> so i put them out here and plugged them into the 2x12 and uh geez they can um yeah they, they make they a rumble yeah and the thing i said to her is like even if even if they were like one watt, and of course they're not, they're 20 watts and they switch down to four watts, but even if they were one watt amps, it's actually a bad example because it's not true, but if they were amps that weren't loud enough, if these were in a situation where they weren't loud enough because the venue was too big, that venue should be miking your amp up at that point, you know what I mean? And you also don't <laughs> need to do that with them either. Yeah. For so. example, when I say this to start where people are going to shit themselves, that's not plugged into anything. Yeah. Because it's got an internal load box. Yeah. So we can have it nice and lit up and looking all bonny and on, not that you can really see it, but uh, no concerns whatsoever. I had it plugged into my computer through USB and was fucking with all the sounds, including other uh, enhancers and EQs and reverbs and cab, choosing what cabs, what microphones I wanted in the cab, where they sat, yeah. if they were on axis or on axis, what, uh, off axis, sorry, the volumes of them, phase inversion, all of that <laughs> stuff. Like, way more than I could actually ever use. So I was just going through the presets like, Okay, I don't need to tweak that one. Yeah. That one I'm going to spend too long playing with. Not that one, but like... Sure. Pff, ridiculous. Ridiculous. So yeah, super cool. Uh, thank you very much to the guys over at Rev, and please do consider going and checking them out and picking up something. We did also put some pedals next to the amp, but it's so dark that you can't really... Uh, you know what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do? We'll do it flashlight. Flashlight. We've got the G3 in one side and the duality. <laughs> DX uh, on the other. Hopeless. So yeah, that's um that's pretty cool. Go and check them out. Uh, a couple of bits of fan mail to look through today. As always, please do send us fan mail to gsoulsfanmail at gmail.com. Should also point out again, buy me a coffee. Check us out on there. Go watch the bonus episode. We've got some good feedback on that. We will be doing another one of those soon. I'm not sure if we should do another one like we did. I think we should mix it up, do something fresh. Mm -hmm. But of course, that's down to you guys. If there's something in particular that you would like to see, let us know via buy me a coffee.com. Um, right, fan mail. So, um, cut us got back to us again. Cut us got back to us. Actually, he got back to us ages ago, and I just forgot to actually read it out because we were talking about how good his camera angles were. Uh, not just the angles, everything about the shot, the color correction on them was ridiculous too. Yeah. So he's just uh, he's just given us some photos of his setup, and I thought this might be interesting to anybody who um, might be looking to record at home because 
when I said his shots are great, I mean, they are great shots, but it's not like he's using any better gear than I'm using. He's just much better than his actual setup. up. <laughs> At least I'll speak for myself. That's, sure. a, that's a definite for me. Yeah. Um, I could set up that shot, but my problem is I need to, I have this dual camera setup thing for Skype. And then when it comes to filming a video, there's definitely a better angle for making videos than for Skype lessons. But having to go between them both. No, thank you. That's it. <laughs> so yeah, we've got, uh, we've got the camera and that's, that's what your setup looks like. Oh, who are the ugly bastards in the picture? Oh, wait. <laughs> Thank you very much, mate. That's most kind to actually have us in your spare screen. Uh, um, just the one camera. And he does give us some information on what those uh, what those cameras are. Oh, sorry about the camera is. An US M50 Mark II. Yeah. Set between 18 and 24 millimeter lens. Okay, oh, sorry, I'll read it through. Kurt emailed saying, here you go, guys. Attach some photos of my setup. If it helps you get up to my glorious standard of video quality, eh, video quality for the last two vids. I mean, you're already blown us out the water and you're going to continue to do so. But that's okay. Um, and uh, bog standard soft box lights. Honestly, soft box lights are uh, soft box lights. Even these ones, I've, I've got those exact ones in my house. Mm. That's the ones that I have used personally. And they're great. Like, if you don't need anything fancy, whereas yeah. you've spent a long time having yours and went, no, nah, I'm going to go LED. It's much better in the long run. So, yeah, well, the only feedback that I would give uh, on this uh, and to anybody but to Curtis and in, in specifically your softbox lights sock let's try again your softbox lights only take one bulb whereas my softbox lights take four bulbs um and they're pointing in four directions so you can get a lot more light coming out of them i did have the stock halogen bulbs in them for a long time but when you use them for a long time it just they they cook you they just <laughs> fill the room with warmth yes so i upgraded those to led bulbs that i have in them now and um yeah if you can if 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 you have the option to look for softbox lights, I would recommend going because it's always better to have more light than you need, mm -hmm. uh, and be able to dial it back than be short on light. Light is, I mean, it's still realistically we don't have enough light in here. Realistically, just as you put it there, in terms of your camera, you're always going to fare better having to turn your light sensitivity down yeah. than turning it up and ending up with gain and yeah. whatever you've got um, or distortion through your image. But yeah, thanks very much. Cut ups cracking. Um, have a quick bit of fan mail from Stephen. Nice. Hello, Stephen. Hi, guys. Greetings from Chicago. Yeah, it's deep dish pizza. It's, yeah. not, it's not pizza. <laughs> I'm sticking to that one. It's not pizza. It's a pie. It's a uh, pizza you know, pie. I, I'll give you. Your, I'll definitely give you that because it's it's like pastry crust. Yeah. At least the one I had, it was Giordano's we went to, which is the, the right. big famous chain, I believe. Okay. Um, and it, it was basically a cheese wheel and pastry with toppings. <laughs> but you know what? Fuck me, it was amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Right, so greetings from Chicago. I hope you and your families are staying healthy. In case you didn't realise it, you and all the YouTube content creators played a huge part in keeping a lot of us sane in the past year. I really can't thank you enough. Thanks to you, Stephen. Um, There's quite a lot to put on us, but I don't think we deserve that kind of accolade, but we do appreciate it. Thank you. Um, anyway, Levi, are you working a side job as an Android tech dude? This will be interesting. Considering he can't even fix his own computer. What concert costs just 45 cents? 50 cent featuring Nickelback. <laughs> no. Fucking hell, you've got a twin and he's got the same shape pattern as you as well. <laughs> I'm only kidding, you're funnier than that. But good spot, man, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, in fact, you know what? John. I might actually take that link off because it looks as like if that guy teaches you how to set up fire sticks and stuff. <laughs> and I, I would quite like to do that for myself. Uh, nice. So the rest of the email is stay safe. Steve, P.S. My mom's older brother was named Levi. A very cool guy and a big reason my childhood was pretty damn good. Thanks very much, Stephen. Um, Levi's a good cunt. Um, Sometimes. <laughs> I don't know as much as about that, but um, okay. We're just going to keep ploughing forward because uh, we don't want our show to run too long today. I know Mike is horrendously hungover. <laughs> I'm not too bad, but I would definitely like to go and lie down. <laughs> you, you know what? You know you're hungover when you wake up craving fruit. Oh, yeah, yeah. For somebody that does nothing but drink energy drinks and eat shite. I woke mm. up like, I want strawberries and grapes. Vibrating. My, uh... Uh, I know that feeling all too well. I, uh, the last time I really pushed myself drinking too far was uh, was London, and I woke up craving both fruit and a gym. And let me be clear, no, I didn't want to go to the gym right there, but my body was telling me I am going to die, and I need to, <laughs> I need to be stronger. Get some sweat out. Yeah. That's so. that. Was that when you were about to move house? Uh, no, long after I'd moved house. Okay, because I just house. remember hearing the story of you all going down there drinking quite a lot, and I believe it was Kendall fell asleep in a guitar case. That, no, I fell asleep. Oh, it was you. Sorry, yeah. and your BC Rich the, case? I used the coffin case as something to try and sleep in. <laughs> Ironic, considering you probably woke up feeling dead. Yeah. <laughs> so, John Brown has emailed us. Um, Hello both. Hope you are well. 
Thanks so much for reading my fan mail. Felix was thrilled to get a shout out on the podcast, as was I. Well deserved, mate. Thank you. I was contemplating signing off with fuck the Tories in my original message, as has now become the norm. I can't believe I'm starting a social movement. I'm going to get a big head soon and start like, <laughs> like a wee bonnet and make my own merch and it'll be like Che Guevara style. Uh, but thought if it ever did get read, I couldn't then play the podcast clip to Felix, age 13. I'm sure he'll not be too bad with it. Uh, however, since originally writing to you back in January, the general level of corruption, sleaze, gross stupidity and arrogance in the assholes in charge has meant that fuck the Tories has become such a regularly used phase at the dinner table that Felix and brother Max and mum, a, hero a heroic NHS trauma nurse, are now totally immune. Fucking love to hear it. And uh, thanks very much to your wife for the hard work that she's put in because I can only imagine the genuine terror and difficulty in going to work every single day as a frontline worker in the NHS. So I, I can't say high enough praises for you. Yeah. Um, you know, reading the rest of it? No, it was just a link to an auction and no. Okay, fair enough. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, John. And you're right. Fuck the Tories. I'm really, I'm very aware how long we've been talking and I'm very aware of how many things we have to talk about today. <laughs> oh, I'll be fine. We've got lots. Uh, but I really, really enjoyed this bit of fan mail. So I really want to read this uh -huh. and we'll do this in full and then we'll crack on with the show. That sounds good. Do you want me to read it? You want to read it? Oh, uh, please, you read it. I can't read. Yeah, you can't. That's fair. <laughs> uh, so Jake Oakman. Hi, Jake. Um, and the title of the email was, if you could scroll up, please. Uh, Podcast from the perspective of an autistic, of an autistic fella. I'm actually really interested in this, um, Jake, obviously other than the fact it's fan mail, but um, in my job at the moment, I'm supporting young people in residential care, and the more insight I can get into the mechanisms of, I know everybody's obviously their own um, conditions, even people that are on the spectrum all have completely different uh, circumstances, but I'm really interested to hear how people feel that way, and in my mind... The more info I sure. can get, the better I can support these young people. Anyway, hey Levi, hey Mike, I've been watching your podcast since before episode one. Since before episode one? You must have watched it when it was with uh, Lyle yeah, we, and yeah, we had, Kendo. We did episodes before it was and the podcast. Doug as well, that's yeah. right. And it finally worked up some courage to share my perspective of your podcast and others from the mind of an autistic guy. Thanks very much for the support. That's pretty crazy you've been listening since before then. And thanks very much for reaching out. It must have took quite a bit of courage for you to wait this long to then be like, right, Knows the time. 112 episodes. That's crazy. Plus. Plus. Yeah. So, thank you. Uh, podcasts are a very important thing for me. They keep my mind active and focused on something when I otherwise don't have a task to complete. This stops me from catastrophizing. My autism symptoms are exacerbated by other mental health problems like depression, situations that sometimes don't even exist. I can feel you on uh, cognitive distortions, specifically catastrophizing. Um, not me personally, but someone close to me. So, yeah. I, I, I know... Not what you're going through, but I have seen what that can do to people just getting into a situation of totally being over the top of things that actually might not even happen. Um, but this is a big but, and I cannot lie, your other brothers can't deny. Podcasts can be very difficult to follow or understand when your autism makes it tough to understand the hosts or follow the conversations they're having. Um, probably doesn't help any that I've got a really strong accent if you're referring to me but uh, that's the I, beauty is actually not I, I was just yeah. about to read on yeah. uh, I tried the Joe Rogan podcast and while I appreciate how brilliant it is and how great Rogan is as a host my god it's tough to follow most of it the constant topic changes and the lack of personability is what makes it challenging for me I actually agree I think Joe Rogan's a great host but I think that it's so sporadic that it, it's like a train of thought conversation yeah. rather than a we have points to talk about sure. um, so I, I totally get where you're coming from yeah However, you have both managed to create a podcast that's not only filled with great content, but it's accessible. Whether this was done on purpose or not, it doesn't matter. We're flying through life, we're arse hanging out our pants, <laughs> just, just getting lucky, to be honest. Um, your podcast is accessible to me, and I'm sure many other artistic musicians and music fans. Your humour and sarcasm are easy to follow because the spaces are filled with personality and humility from you both. Whether you want to admit it or not, you're both so warm and welcoming, even through a screen. Your topics are laid out in a clear structure and your tangents are sensical. I don't know about that, but I'm glad you think so. <laughs> Most people that know me are like, they just talk shite. <laughs> You've cultivated something that's accessible to everyone in the community. It's like a family in so many ways. You've helped people who are struggling with mental health illnesses, people who need distractions, people who wanted to make friends. Heck, you even helped me when I was having an autism-related meltdown. I got the notification that re uh, the recent episode was uploaded as I was having this meltdown, and you guys helped me by giving me something familiar to follow that had clear structure. From the bottom of my heart, thank you both so much. Thank you for creating something that's accessible. Thank you for helping me cope. Thank you for being truly great people. I wish you both nothing but the best and health and happiness for you and yours. Best wishes, Jake. 
Oh, Jake. Yeah, you, but go with the last bit. Right. The PS. Scroll down a bit then. Oh, is that it? Sorry. Yeah, PS, if this makes it to an episode, please paraphrase or make what I said make sense for you to both to read if it doesn't already. Structuring my thoughts isn't my strong suit. I would disagree. That's Yeah. You did a, Jake, you did a much better job putting that email together than I do usually just speaking. So, <laughs> And in talk about what, even the intro for this, you took about nine times to say that I was hungover. I know. It's, it, when we do this podcast, we, we don't obviously... We, actually, I'll answer... I'll, I'll throw some points on this. So I think the reason we differ from the Joe Rogan podcast, aside from not being successful, is that we uh, plan out the subjects that we're going to talk about. And if any time we share a screen, you can see all of the things that we're going to talk about on the top of yeah. top of the screen. So it's easy for us to, to stay focused in that sense. But the other thing is it is a conversation. We haven't scripted anything. So no. that one moment there where I had scripted what I was going to say at the start of the podcast, it took me about eight takes to get it. Just a sentence. It was difficult for me to say, what was the point was it I even said? An existential crisis induced by a hangover or whatever it was. Like existential it. hangover crisis, I believe. Couldn't say it. And, that, and even in the one that we went with, still not great. <laughs> no, I, I quite liked it. I think you've done pretty well. Um, I, there is no concern whatsoever that anything you've typed there, Jake, is unclear in any yeah. way. And thank you so much. Like, yeah, that's a really good email. I really like that. I am. I'm, I'm feeling a wee bit I'm humble, to be honest. Like, pat myself on the back. I'm pretty <laughs> shit at taking compliments, so I'm feeling a bit like <laughs> not uncomfortable. I don't mean it like that, but I, I, I generally am good at take, like taking them at face value, and that's just something I need to work on. But thanks very much. I really appreciate it, mate. And I'm glad to hear that we help you in any sense. Yeah, we've both spoke about our own trials and tribulations and stuff we've been going through because it's good for us. We can vent to each other. We've got our own support network even sitting next to each other. But then we can reach that out to you guys as well in Monday Night Guitar Geek Club or whenever you're watching or listening. You can have a good time. You can, If it helps, you can take from us. If it distracts you, yep. even better. If it helps you go through similar situations, great. If it helps you knowing that we're here if you want to talk to us, Amazing. Like, th there's so many positive facets of us yeah. doing this podcast, and it can be hard sometimes yeah, to old, schedule it in. Totally. And, uh, but we do it. It's, it's good. You know, we, we're we building a community, and the reason we wanted to read emails like this is because we want everybody to know that no matter what stage of involvement you feel you have in the podcast, you're always welcome to have more of an involvement in the, the podcast. Absolutely. Um, and we're here for you as much as you could be here for us. Uh, and I'm going to show that now. Uh, just by pointing out that, again, we are still working on the new intro to the show. That's being done with a talented artist. Um, mm -hmm. We might be looking for a digital artist to do a T-shirt because Lucy is too busy to do anything in a reliable time frame. That's fair enough. Um, and, yeah, if we can pay someone out there in the Guitar Souls community to do some art for a T-shirt for us, uh, that would be something that we'd be more than happy to do. That is just the perfect way to show that how, how much a symbiotic relationship we have and yeah. like so uh if anybody out there is a digital artist uh get in touch shoot me a message shoot mike a message and um we'll see if what please. if your style is in line with what we we uh i, I don't want to say too much because i don't want to spoil the design of, course, of the t-shirt <laughs> of course but uh, let's summarize it and you have all supported us so much and doing this podcast hopefully we can support someone back yes and, and we'll and keep I that going need a digital artist to do a logo for my upcoming podcast with melissa so <gasps> double shot yeah so fantastic du yeah double Jake, gig. thanks very much man really really appreciate it so, so cool. we're going to start the show just by talking about gus g just briefly and this of course is me just doing a shout out to my boss or one of my bosses <laughs> <laughs> i'm transcribing the new gus g album uh i've not i hadn't listened to the new single uh gus emailed me today with a link to this and said let's get started on this um and he'll fire over the rest of the album soon um so i went to listen to it and i was like you know what I'll listen to this with Mike. Yes. So we had to listen to this song. The song is called Fierce. And um, you know what the G in Gus G stands for? Gaffer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gus the Gaffer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, Sorry. I was so shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm such an old man and I'm hung over and top it. Yeah. So like, my partner has been rotten today. Um, the song is Fierce and Metal Sucks have gone with the title of Gus G gets Fierce Lampoons Black Metal in new video. Um, I don't know if there's much lampooning going on, but it's uh, it's really I I really enjoyed the video for this. Oh, I, I was laughing the whole way through the video for this. It's uh, it's just it's just funny. It's lighthearted, and there's that juxtaposition that you're always gonna get when you take something so serious, as in the black metal lifestyle. 
oh and then something and then treat that in a light-hearted moment or, or put it in a light-hearted setting yes is um is always funny so um yeah i really enjoyed it do you want to just read gus's quote certainly can boo check out the story for my brand new single fierce don't be scared this is just a love story I came up with the concept of a lonely rock star who eventually finds true love in the eyes of Necromantisa, a girl he previously kept hostage in his dungeon. Music finally unites them and they live happily ever after and even form a metal band. Nightmare or reality? We had tons of fun shooting this, getting in full makeup. I love certain black metal and shock rock aesthetics and wanted to try something different instead of doing yet another performance video and I also want to make a video with my cats too. Many thanks to Panagiotis Kuntsuras for the excellent directing once again, my immortal beloved and our cats Marquise and Leon. Or Marquise, sorry. Yeah, loved it. I absolutely uh, loved I, it. When he says, I wanted to do something different rather than just another performance video, totally on board with that, Gus. Like, you know, the, these performance videos that you see bands doing, I'm not that I take any issue with them, but mm -hmm. it's, it would be so easy for you to just film a playthrough video. Doesn't need You don't need to put a whole lot of effort into a playthrough video. Uh, whereas this, this, like is, the party this is art. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is this is art. It's a telling a story. You know? I actually think gusty has been like reading through our emails or our Facebook messages or something, man, because he seems to have went with almost every angle that party can have tried to go with recently. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's tremendous. It's really good. Um, if you if you know any of Gusty's stuff, it's very much up that same, similar sound. Yeah. But it's it's good. It's really good. It's really cracking tune. And it reminds me a bit of like a Necro Goblicon. No idea. I heard of them before, no. They're like a kind of metal band that sound a wee bit like Gusty stuff, but they've got that kind of blackened influence as well. Right. And their front man is a wee goblin. Like, he's got like the latex face and all that, man. Aye. It's up that kind of silly street, but in a good way. <laughs> We're going to continue on by laughing again at KK Downing. We're going to do it super briefly, though. Don't worry. Because just, this just... is a lot of shite that you spurted clearly just to get more fucking yeah. conversation. I don't care that I used the name. Actually, ex-Judas Priest guitarist K.K. Downing struggled long and hard with the name of his new band. There's a really... No, you didn't. There's a cringy quote in here. You either, you either struggled or you didn't. You can't have done both. Yeah, where wait, is it? Wait, wait, is it a... Is this bit... Uh... That's the one i just seen. I was there from the beginning, he continued. I just didn't want to leave the priest behind. I just can't call myself Wild Crazy Boys, something that doesn't have an association with me and my life. I gotta be honest, I know that Judas Priest has gained a lot of new and younger fans, and I wish them all the best. But I'm looking at the band, and it isn't the band that I looked at for or I looked at for 40 years. It's not the same band to me. Right, cool. Your band isn't the same either. So how the fuck can you call yourself KK's priest? Yeah. Uh just we should have added this as well. So read that. Sorry. So apparently referencing the current lineup of Judas Priest, including his replacement, Richie Faulkner, uh, sorry, Richie Faulkner, KK said, These guys are out there. Some I've never met. And they're playing my songs as a priest. So why can't I be a priest? You can be a priest. Join the clergy. I just I don't even know how to answer that. Like, yeah. you left the band? What the fuck do you want? That's exactly what it comes down to. And what, it's why we keep laughing at him. Because it's like, they're playing my songs in the band that I left. I left the band and they're still using the name. And I want to use the name because I can make money off of the name. It's, it's embarrassing. It really is, isn't it? Like, I mean, I, I kind of get maybe there's an emotional tie to some of the songs being played by other people, but at the same time, if you decide you're resigning from a band and then they change their mind about calling it quits as well and they decide to move on, you've made your own bed. Yeah, also, more importantly, assuming he still owns his songwriting side of things, if he's not sold that, mm -hmm. everybody seems to be selling that, so what? If Judas Priest go out on tour and they're playing fucking arenas, you're going to make bank on PRS. Big money for sitting in the house. Yeah. Or writing your other terrible tunes, Hellfire, Thunderstorm, yeah. Dugwank, whatever the fuck it's called. So KK's Priest will play select shows to mark the 50th anniversary of Priest and Downing's career as a founding member. So your new band are playing anniversary shows when they're not the band that you're playing for an anniversary of. You're having a birthday party with just yourself there. It's it's just embarrassing. And, uh, Makes me sad. It honestly, just makes me sad. He's sixty nine years old, I believe. Sixty sixty nine. Yes, sixty nine. Nice, nice. nice. sixty nine nice. year old guitarist. Um, just what a shitty way to to send out your career than this petty fucking like. I don't even think it's real. I think he's just hitting it with all this pish and getting himself mixed up 
Because last week he was talking about how he's not that bothered. Now he is bothered. Yeah. He struggled about changing his name, but he wasn't bothered about it at all. And he knew it was such an easy choice for him. It just seems like all he wants to do is be like, me, attention, me, listen to my album. Let's no place your bets then. So place, how man? many views do you think Hellfire Thunderbolt has had? 16. <laughs> can, can I get a more serious guess? Sorry. Um, 150,000. Okay, so you've gone quite high. Quite you think hard. that's high? Well, for what compared to what I think, right? Uh, compared to what I think, so I I think seventy five thousand would be a point up on screen so we can get it like as a legitimate. Neither is a talking nonsense. Drum roll, please. Oh wow! Okay. Jesus Christ! Nearly a million. Nearly a million. That means I win because I was closest. Jesus. Something about that you you would totally won, but mate, something about know. that doesn't come across as legit to me i've got nothing more to say than yes yeah that's a million <laughs> views and he's not picked up more than ten thousand subscribers that's not legit there's no fucking way i don't know as much i would imagine there'll be people who were fervent almost extremist fans of yep uh, judas priest and probably of kk downing mm -hmm. um who have maybe listened to it quite a few times thinking they're supporting him because you do get, I'm not saying that that would account for 900,000 views, but I can't imagine all of those are bot farm. I'm not saying all of them, but, you know, 3,000, the videos had 3,000 comments, which is just, I don't there's know. A, just, a, 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 aye, there's like, the numbers don't add up, do they? Yeah, and we, we know, you know, we've seen this in the past, that record labels, uh, certainly on the pop scene, it's not unheard of for them to buy subscribers for channels, buy views mm. for channels. Um, also, interestingly, they inflate. The upvotes are sitting at 22.8 thousand as opposed to the almost a million views. So that's like 30 times less in terms of interactions that somebody's yeah. actually said year and to it. Yeah. That's quite concerning. Yeah, definitely. Um... Their Facebook has 89,000 likes and they've got a million views on their one video on YouTube so far. Yeah. I get where you're coming from. I, I do. You better not be at it, KK. Yeah. It, uh, something about that seems a little bit fishy. Anyway, we're going to use that as a way to springboard into uh, another band that's going... Because to me, there's nothing more cringy mm -hmm. than somebody leaving a band, but then going, but it's my band, so I'm going to go out and I'm going to do the same band, and I'm going to somehow use the name of the original band in order to make sure that I can still be my band. Okay, what's happening? What's going up next? So, Graham Bonnet... <laughs> uh, Graham Bonnet has reformed the band Alcatraz. Right. Alcatraz, of course, famous for being one of the, the first recording, the first recording. Uh, no, no, Steeler is the first recording of uh, Malmsteen. Um, but one of Malmsteen's early bands, he was in Alcatraz. And, was Vi not in Alcatraz? When Malmsteen left, Steve Vi joined Alcatraz. I so, don't know any other stuff. I just know they've had some famous guitarists. Yeah. I'll tell you what my main problem with this headline is Arch Enemies Jeff Loomis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just because he plays in the band at the moment doesn't mean he's like a founding member or anything yeah. he's been way more interesting even his own name carries more weight than saying Arch Enemy mm. in my mind sure I think Arch Enemy I think of Chris and Michael a lot yeah yeah no I, I, that's totally fair totally fair And now, so I brought this to your, your attention because I this happened a while ago actually but back last week this was got announced it was in the chat wasn't it there yeah. was some Alcatraz drama and I was like uh, drama tell yeah. me tell yeah. me so I had to look into it um, it's like a meerkat because I didn't know Alcatraz was still doing things <laughs> yeah. Alcatraz was still going um, mm -hmm. because currently the band Alcatraz features Joe Stump on guitar you know where Joe's playing no I know the name so he is he's just Malmsteen he's literally just Malmsteen there's there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He sounds like Malmsteen, plays like Malmsteen. You can see his signature ESP is a Malmsteen strat, essentially. Uh, uh, even like his general style yeah. is yeah. very close to Malmsteen. Not yeah. not stealing from him, but sure. definitely uh, changing the homework a yeah. little. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not shitting on him. Joe Stump is an incredibly good player. In fact, he's got to be an incredible player, if, even if he's just sounding like Malmsteen. That's where I've saw his name. <laughs> oh, but I like... Malmsteen, yeah. early days. Yeah. Even the photo was very Malmsteen. Yeah. So he's a teacher at Berkeley. You know, he's a he's a great great player. Like I'm not I'm not going to shit on his playing at all. Um, I do think I, I couldn't do it myself. I'm not uh, going to shit on his playing, but well, no, I couldn't do it myself. Like I, his playing is great, but I couldn't. Like every time he does anything, he goes out. Surely he just knows everything he does. He's just being compared to Malmsteen. 
And I just hate that I wouldn't be able to do that myself. Mm-hmm. But that's your and I's perspective on sure. it. That's not necessarily his. So. Yeah, no, no totally. I I'm, sure, I'm sure he's fine with it. I'm just, I, couldn't, I couldn't do it. So, great player. Um, he is with the band Alcatraz. Alcatraz are a band, but yeah, with Dougie White, of course. Of We checked this. He's not with Sure. Is he Motherwell? That's right. Somewhere local. He's a, a Close local. enough. Bell's Hill, maybe. Yeah. Um, um, none of these say that Jeff Lemus is in the band on so, this photo. Well, exactly. So, this is, this is the band Alcatraz. Whereas Graham Bonnet's band is Graham Bonnet's Alcatraz. So let's show up Bonnet's Alcatraz. Yeah. Graham Bonnet on Tuesday. So this week would have what that been then like the sixth or something? Yeah. Uh, hi all, Graham here. The cat's out the bag. It's with tremendous pride and excitement that I am announcing that Jeff Loomis, currently with Arch Enemy, formerly of Nevermore, also great solo stuff, and was in whatever his project was with a uh, fucking what do you call him? Uh, oh, uh, 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 did you do the Keith Merrow album? Keith Merrow, correct. Conquering Dystopia? Yeah. Was Conquering Dystopia, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, anyway, sorry, I got totally uh, sideswept there. As officially the new guitar player of Graham Bonnet's Alcatraz, Jeff is a powerhouse of a musician, a brilliant writer, and a great guy. His skills are unparalleled, and I'm thrilled the prospect of re- uh, recreating the magic of the early days of Alcatraz, but with a modern, heavier sound. When I first heard Jeff, I was astonished by his technique coupled with his great feel and incredible melodies. You can have a little taste of it on the upcoming Graham Bonnet Band album as Jeff is one of our guests. Below is a Jeff's official statement. Not a Jeff, sorry. As Jeff's official statement. It is also a Jeff's official statement. My name is Jeff. <laughs> uh, hey everyone, I'm super excited to be working with Graham Bonnet. Graham wrote this. I've been a long time fan of his vocals and lyrics for many years and it's going to be an honour to craft some amazing music together and play some select live shows. Select live shows. Yeah. I want to let you all know I'm a very active member of Arch Enemy and we'll be seeing you all on the road very soon with them. Just to be clear, Jeff is still an active member of Arch Enemy and I'm still with the Graham Bonnet Band. More news coming soon. Cringy, isn't it? It's uh, just... It comes across as... Uh, what, in my mind, this is Jeff going, brilliant, I get to work with quite a good name and I get some money and I don't have to really commit to it because if it's just select live shows, then I'll record some shit for him and make some dough. Yeah. Sound? Yeah. Um, Fine for uh, Jeff, but also two bands with the same name, except somebody's put their name next to it. Yeah, and it's happened to, I, for whatever reason, I can't think of examples of it, but it's happened a fair few times in, in the history of music, right? That's it. Um, Graham was one of the original members of Alcatraz, but he left the band. Was. Yeah, he he left the band. And there's no, you know, it sucks, but he left the band. I would criticise Ozzy Osbourne if when he started, when he left Sabbath and was doing his solo records, he called them Ozzy Osbourne's Black Sabbath, that would be dumb, you know? Um, Ozzy didn't really need to do that, to be fair. He already had a fairly decent reputation as a front man and as a band leader. Sure. Does Graham Bonnet have that same accolade? He's definitely got an audience, yeah. I, but as his audience as big as Ozzy's was and saying that as well a big part of it, I think what, what made Ozzy so popular otherwise outside of that was Sharon she was a great businesswoman by the looks sure. of it yeah, yeah. you know what I mean just getting the marketing right getting things right for him and setting him up with the right opportunities and yeah. keep him out of being the, the most lunatic man alive Yeah, somehow surviving the most insane stories anyway <laughs> yeah. we're rambling uh, Graham Bonnet you live up to your name <laughs> yeah um I think the question you have to ask yourself is, let's say Alcatraz are in town and Graham Bonnet's Alcatraz are in town. Nobody else is playing that night. You've got a free ticket to both of them. Who are you going to go and see? Myself in the living room. <laughs> well, this is the sad thing, right? I'm probably going to actually going to go see Graham Bonnet's Alcatraz because Jeff Loomis is playing guitar. Aye, and if I have to pick between Jeff Loomis and... Depends uh, where they're playing, because if normal Alcatraz are coming and playing in Motherwell, I'd imagine that would be wild. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't imagine... Well, maybe not, it's because the only venue you really run up here is the Civic Centre, which would probably just be grab a granny night. But I mean, that's where, uh, fuck, what was Bumblefoot's band? Oh, this was the, the uh, Portnoy band. It was uh, Sons of group. Apollo. Sons of Apollo. Yeah, they, they played in there. Was it good? I didn't go. All right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a it's a good venue. My point just being right. that, like for for like a rock band, sure. I don't know how well it would be. They'd probably get away with it because they're like a super group, and it's sure. pretty much. All very accomplished yeah. and talented musicians, yeah, showing off each of their instruments. Mm. Whereas this is, uh, it is an interesting one for me. Like I said, I would rather go see Jeff Loomis play than Joe Stump. I would like to see Joe Stump play, but I just 
respect the band Alcatraz, even though, of course, they're not the band Alcatraz anymore. I but they've got way them. more right to the name than this fucking Egypt. And that's exa- well, yeah, I don't know about way more, but there's definitely more of a legal right to the name. And that's what this all comes down to, isn't it? Like, I'm sure Graham Barnett would love to use the name Alcatraz, but for whatever legal reason, whatever agreements were made, he doesn't have that right. So he's trying to get around that as best he can by doing doing this. And this band is as much Alcatraz as the other band is as much Alcatraz. Mm-hmm. But somebody has the right to the name. Well, if I lost, used... Just, just move on. <laughs> I, I've, I've at least bought two Starbucks coffees. That means I can open my own place called Big Mike's Starbucks. <laughs> or Big Mike's Bar Stocks. Well, I, I was just going to, you know, take a take a better example. You know, just do a cover band. Levi Clay's Dream Theater. Speaking of Dream Theater, I need to send you a video that Kieran sent me. Kieran got James LeBrie to do a cameo. And it's essentially just him shouting Big Chungus for about a minute. And he's like, I didn't even know that Big Chungus was Bugs Bunny but fat until K-Mac sent me this and I went and looked it up. And it's him like talking shit about playing Among Us. There's an imposter in the group and, and the, the games gang or something. It's fucking, I'll send you it right now. Yeah, that's, that's... You, could, you know what? You could put it on, I think. I don't know if Keen will be happy me sharing it, but... Yeah, no, I won't put it on. I won't put it on. Send it to me, I'll look after because I don't want to... It's so funny, man. It's just... See, when they first hit me, I'm like, what the fuck is this? And it just kept going. I'm like, you're a lunatic, man. <laughs> Actually, how he started the message was... Did you see the price on that? No. Okay. Do yeah. you want to know the most stupid thing I've spent money on? I'm Hang not on. looking. Hide it. Hang on. Go on, tell me. I don't know how much money he spent. He just told me the most stupid thing he had spent money on, and then he sent me the link. Ugh. Put us half a screen. Come on, you fuck. Well, you don't want me to see the price? Well, just don't look at the screen. I need to read it. <laughs> I'm going to read. So Jimi Hendrix owned and used Marshall Super Lead 100 is up for sale on eBay. Uh, I was trying to like z- zoom in on a picture, but it won't allow me to. But okay, it's the it's an original Jimi Hendrix owned and used Marshall Super Lead 100. Um, it feels really cheap asking you how much you think this is because I'd be very surprised if you didn't see it. But how much? I didn't actually see if I'm totally honest. Yeah. So this is one he personally owned and the heritage has been proven. He, uh, yeah, so... Uh, Used and recorded 1969 Marshall Super League 100. Serial number is on it. Built in March 69. Jimmy used this amp on stage from April 1969. Concerts include, but are not limited to Woodstock, uh, Woodstock Art Fair. Yeah, there's a bunch of things. Like, um, included a three letters of authenticity. Right, up to that point, it was literally just, oh, you definitely used it there. I heard it there too. Sure. Oh, I, I, I used to uh, use it to, to uh, prop up his, his cans of beer when it was at the side <laughs> of the stage. Yeah. Okay, right, so if it's He real, went into Sean Smith mode there. Did I? What you fucking hell, mate? <laughs> if, uh, if, uh, if it's real and it has all the authenticity, somebody's probably asking quarter million. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. I legitimately didn't see that. Yeah, quarter And I was thinking like six figures, maybe 100,000, and I was like, nah, somebody's definitely asking higher than that. Yeah. 250 grand. This was sent to me just before we started the show. Um, what an astonishing amount of money. Someone will buy that. Uh, someone will absolutely buy that. And that person is stupid. Not stupid, but uh, yeah. more money than sense. It's probably the better way to put it. Yeah. Would you buy an amp at a, mil- a quarter million? It's one of those things, isn't it? Like, how much money do you have in the bank? You know, if I had a billion pounds in the bank, I'd probably buy an amp for 250 grand. You'd probably buy the, the amp out of the money in your wallet for exactly. 250 grand. Yeah. Let me just send you two Bitcoins, son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all stuff like that. It's all just a case of percentages, isn't it? People look at me um and talk negatively about how many expensive guitars I have and I own and I buy, but I have a business in music. None of them know you've got a meth lab. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I've got a meth lab and I'm <laughs> and I make really good money in my meth lab, therefore. When I look at a two thousand pound guitar, that's a very different thing than somebody that works. I don't know, uh, delivering milk bottles to people. Two thousand pounds is a, a lot of money to to spend on a guitar for me. It's still it's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. I don't, I've not got a hundred grand in the bank or anything, but yeah. two thousand pounds isn't going to kill me the same way it might kill me. Um, <laughs> it, might, yeah, it, might kill, it might kill you. Yeah. And see, when you keep saying guitar, like the money you'd spend two thousand pounds on a guitar, what you actually mean is a conical flask. Don't you? Yeah. Your meth lab. Yeah. A, a, a new uh, filtration system. Yeah. There's so, a reason nobody gets to see this side of the camera. This is this just goes on for fifty yards. You probably heard what sounds like an aircon unit, but it actually is an extractor fan, like a really <laughs> really complicated one. 
Yeah, I'll, t- I'll put the. Uh, and also, this isn't above ground. We're at least twenty-five feet underneath. That's why we have so many lights, because you know I need. Are they for the weed farm? <laughs> I'll turn the, the big extractor fan off now. He's the only guy I know that has somehow managed to cross strain meth into a weed plant. Yeah. Anyway, I, I went a bit far in that time. Yeah, you didn't did. I? I mean, I just, I just went with it, so that's, uh, that's absolutely fine. This, this is my problem when I'm hungover. I'm not funny and I don't know when to stop. <laughs> At least usually when I'm not funny, I know when to stop. Uh, well, let me give you some, some sad, sombre news. Mm-hmm. Very bad news. Mushuga postponed late 2021 tour to spring 2022. I don't know if that is bad news because I don't have tickets anyway. Well, I also don't have tickets. But that's because I was sceptical that any gigs were going to happen. So. Yeah, yeah, to be fair. <laughs> to be fair. So the dozens of tour announcements here in the US over the past couple of weeks have been overwhelming. Uh, by the way, I'm reading this from Metal Sucks. This yeah. is Vince Nielsen's words, not mine. Overwhelming in a good way, of course, with va- a vaccination rates quickly approaching 70% of eligible people, 52% of the full population, and states and cities everywhere opening up to full capacity. This thing is happening. Fall is going to feel somewhat normal, and the glut of tours is going to be an embarrassment of riches. I really, really hope you don't eat those words, Vince. I'm, I'm not so optimistic as yourself. I'm, ca- I'm cautiously optimistic, but you seem to be going, yeah, it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Mm, not right. Uh, unfortunately, things are not going quite as well for our friends in Europe. The vaccination campaign and much of the content got off to a sluggish start. Uh, sort of the content, not the content. And while many countries have made, since made great strides, they're still a couple of months behind the US. Here's a chart showing vaccination rates of the total population in some key countries. Not as of today. I know. Like, yeah. so you're going to you're going to claim that the states are doing better than the full of Europe because you guys have got less of a number to get done. Yeah. What about the states you've got where people were fighting over not wearing masks and also people claiming their president was right and everything's a hoax and tried to run into the fucking yeah, you don't, Capitol Hill. You don't see that all that much. Yeah, so. No, I can't think of many other countries in or, sorry, any part of Europe really yeah. where we've had violent coups yeah. over actual nonsense. Also, it's all well and good to say, um, you could say, well, we've had our entire population vaccinated. It doesn't ignore the sheer amount of unnecessary death that you had prior to that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, and it also doesn't mean that you're suddenly safe. You can have everybody vaccinated with this thing and it's just still not going to be enough, is it? How many That's times, where we're differing from the States. How many times did Donald Trump come out and say, nah, they're lying, everything's fine, it doesn't exist. But who was it? Was it, uh, Fo- it wasn't Fauci that came out and said it, but it was one of the... Um, Rudy Giuliani came out at one of the things and basically said coronavirus is gone. Yeah. Well, they had like some like... Uh, like six figure deaths happening yeah. per week or something like what what so just keep lying until you believe it yourself no bother yeah like ultimately um gigs are going to get cancelled over here we're probably going to have our lockdowns lockdowns pushed on because the government are being ridiculously cautious over here many people i know would argue way too cautious um cripplingly so for for a lot of people a lot of musicians um musicians are struggling musicians are having it really fucking hard and it's right for people like me that I'm a musician. I work in the music industry, but I have a music, I have a business that is in music um, that doesn't rely on gigging. And therefore, um, you know, I've had a, this business for 10 fucking years now. So I have tax returns for 10 years. And when my business started to get hit by it a little bit, the government step in and like, okay, well, we can give you self-employment grants to, or self-employment, yeah, there are grants, um, taxable income um, to support you. I've been lucky in that respect. Most mm-hmm. of my musician friends haven't been so lucky. Melissa's not got a penny in 18 months. Just about everybody I know that's in any sort of creative, uh, artistic work at the moment, especially self-employed, yeah. have been fucked. Fucked. Yeah. So I look at um, the way things America are doing things, and I'm, part of me is like, it would be great to do things a little bit more like that, I'd be a little bit more gung-ho with things. But then also I have to go, well, you know, unnecessary risk. It's a difficult one. I'm not taking a stance on it. I think it's important to state here. Yes. But I don't really as a stance to take on it, is there? It, Let's just see what we can do and everybody can should be safe. Yeah, you wanna say you wanna say follow the we'll follow the science, we'll follow the science. Um but there's it's not it's not as simple as that because it's way more complicated than just COVID. What about you the the science would say the safest thing to do is lock everybody down, you're not allowed to leave the house for the next year, but it's not viable. So that that would truly be following the science, right, on that one particular issue. And it doesn't take into account the knock-on effects of mental health and uh, the economies and people's livelihoods, etc. So you can't, it's not an easy one to just come to a conclusion on. I was going to run with another story. I'll just make mention of it because it kind of fits in line with this. Right. Have you seen the Foo Fighters uh, are doing gigs, a couple of gigs in the States, but they're vaccine only. You have to 
you have to show proof of your. Of I your... can't wait for people to be like, oh, vaccine passports, meh, you're isolating yeah. your fans, meh, yeah. your government people, meh. Shut up. Yeah, that's just uh, another thing. Just exactly what started happening. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, I mean, is that not? But was it Chris Shifflett that was like anti-vax or something? I'm not sure. No, the the bass player was was an AIDS denier. That sorry, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, I remember there was some. Nate Mendel, there's some weird yeah. shit going on before, and we spoke about it before, but I forgot about it. Yeah. What I was going to say is, if we're going to be really hard down and follow the science as well, that doesn't change the fact that scientific method is test it, make sure your hypothesis stand up. So the advice is probably going to change as we get to know more. Yeah. And that's been a, a ridiculous comment I've seen people put towards not following the science like yeah. where would I follow the science when they keep flip flopping on what they're saying so because they keep getting new information and they keep testing it to see what's the yeah. best way to do it yeah. it's not that they're just going well we'll try this one oh, fuck that. we'll try that now as they are doing yeah. what's called peer reviewed processes of research here's you a, can't here's a really horrifying thought for you though which mm -hmm. I have regularly I would just like to, to say um, we're talking in the UK now about this fear of a third wave third wave probably like the fifth well, I, I think actually that the COVID thing is going to be a lot bigger and a lot longer than anyone ever, ever foresaw it being. And we've got this idea of what we thought was the second wave. Um, whereas actually, if we zoom out and look far back enough and look over the next 10,000 years of humanity, that actually none of these were, were even close to being waves. This was just the curve, you know. The normalizing right. out and there could be what will actually be a second wave in a, a year from now <laughs> and it might not even be uh, covid because history would show you that there are 19 strains so far we saw how bad sars was in the middle east eh, in the middle east sorry the southeast asia and mers which was the middle east respiratory syndrome v basically all the different versions of covid that have yeah. been through the world in specific right. places they've been localized to some degree taken seriously by that localization not quite eradicated but everybody's understood the risks and got past them yeah. SARS especially and I think that was a big reason why a lot of countries in Asia very quickly did the right things when it came to COVID right cool we've seen this before we know exactly what's going to happen we're going to shut the borders everybody's getting masks we can vaccinate brilliant we know how to clean everything we've got all these pandemic plans in place whereas Britain saw this and went ah money away for the NHS well, it's it's not just like we. I was talking to someone. I don't know if it was in the comments or if it was on the Discord. I'm pretty sure it was on the Discord server. Mm -hmm. Um, someone that lives in India, and he was like, "We've we've not got it too bad over here. Like we've been very lucky over mm -hmm. here, over here in India. That certainly fucking changed, you know." And it's that quickly. It's it, and the president went missing, and people were basically calling for him, saying, "Can you actually hurry up and fucking say something so we know what to do?" Yeah. So it could be um like a complacency uh, thing can can make things a lot worse for you, and you know if if America ends up being too complacent, it could 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 go bad. But ultimately, we don't know. And fuck it, we're all moving to Australia. They've done alright. Yeah, I'm interested to see how things pan out in America because if it goes great, then awesome. You know, we we I'm not going to be um annoyed if it if it goes wonderfully. No. I'm going to be annoyed if it goes terribly because it's going to cause issues for friends that I have that live in America. I would yes. love it if things go wonderfully in America and then our government look at that and go, sweet, okay, we can, you know, relax a little bit. And uh. We've been awfully flippant about it, but just trying to be tongue-in-cheek coping mechanism. There is no schadenfreude to be had at people dying. Yeah. It's probably the nice way for me to explain my point of view on it. How very British of us. So, yeah. Uh, what's British about having some sort of concern over other people's welfare? No, I mean... Uh, the manners. But yeah, but also making light of bad situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very British. Self-deprecating humour. Mm, Aye, yeah. very British. So um, yeah, we love it. So Mashago are rescheduling their tour. Um, hopefully, I'll get to see them at some point next year. When's the dates for Glasgow? Have a look. Just went past about eight times. Sorry, you just missed that again. Thirtieth of May, Barras. Oh, Mashago and the Barras a bit class. <laughs> you listen to Zeal and Ardor, the band that are supporting. No. I've heard them a few times. I, I don't. I find them really weird. I can't get into them. No, I don't. I don't, I don't listen to any metal. I have a podcast where I talk about metal. I'm starting another podcast where I talk about metal, but I just don't really listen to any metal anymore. I just listen to to blues and jazz and soul music. It's... Before I go home, once we finish the podcast, I'm going to make you listen to a couple of sleep token songs because I really genuinely think yeah. you'll enjoy it, and it would be fantastic for you to take on the podcast sure. with Melissa. Okay. Um, the album Sundowning, which was. It's two years old now. Um, it was Kieran let me hear them and at first I'm like, I'm no big on this. And then the more 
I listened to it, the more I realised it was actually really clever and not just what I thought it was on the surface. Right. For me, at least. Uh, oh, Devin Townsend announces new album. See, Lightwork see. reveals 2022 European tour. Oh, Devin. Devin, if you're watching this, which obviously will never happen, <laughs> please let us interview you. Come on the podcast. Yeah, he's um be a hard one to, to get. Uh, very much so. I think it'd be a good laugh to talk oh, to for half an hour. But, absolutely. Um, right, I'm going to make Kieran message him. Devin, can we come and see you behind the backstage or something? <laughs> anyway, lovable metal savant Devin Townsend spent several months over the past year plus detailing a new album called Puzzle, even revealing he was essentially finished mixing it in March. Now he's gone and announced he's recording a record called Lightwork and revealed a 2022 European tour in support of it. Does he ever go to sleep? Never. <laughs> I do love it though and I like that I love, sorry, that even when albums come out and I don't like them, he's always trying new things. There's always that wee touch of, well, yeah. what, try this, I'll try that, and whatever else. Like, Casualties are cool, I'm not really big on, but at the same time, it was such a cool original attempt at that kind of bluesy vibe. Um, is like work an entirely separate album from Puzzle, or simply the same project reimagined, re-recorded, and re-everything? Given Devin's fast-working brain, we wouldn't be surprised either way, so we've reached out to his publicist for clarification. Either way, this much we do know. Devin is working with acclaimed producer g g g Arth Richardson, who did Rage Against the Machine, Mudvayne, Nickelback, etc. at the Farm Studios in Vancouver eh, on light work, and that album will ost ostensibly come out in spring 2022, the same time Devin will tour Europe. New Devin music is always a okay by us, no matter what it's called or how it's released. Very rare, but I'm going to agree with Metal Sucks. Yeah. We're definitely in agreement here. And, um... I find it quite strange he's working with a producer as far yeah. as I'm aware Devin always used to do his not, own stuff yeah. or for the most part do you think there will be any UK dates on this European tour? Uh, <laughs> I suppose the real question is or sorry the real point being is, is Brexit going to have fucked it for us legitimately and I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't get any of course I can't see it because there's no no nah, it's all Europe Spain, Portugal, France Germany Ireland Dublin yeah. Dublin have got one in New Delhi since in Britain. We got Dublin. Good souls. I'll be up for that. Absolutely. Yeah, totally be up. Totally. Or somewhere else. Um, let's see if you just scroll up a wee bit. It looked as if it was telling you who was on the album, and it looked like a pretty fucking good lineup. Um, totally oh no, so this is for the Galactic yeah. Quarantine, which is actually dynamite as well. Right. Um, there's a version of Triumph on that. Which is one of Devin's songs where Steve I does a guest solo and St Steve I appears on the yeah, live. Yeah. Oh, that's that's not that one. Sorry, that was like the um, the Halloween special. Right. But it's fucking tremendous. And yeah. I mean, when Steve's is anything, away on his own when planet. When is anything that Devin does anything other than tremendous? I know. <laughs> Even when things go wrong, he's funny, man. I was at the first time I had the opportunity to see him. I didn't see him because all his equipment failed. Laptop and all that fucked, but he spent half an hour just dancing about, being silly, and playing me a Ziltoid puppet and just entertaining people. Yeah, we got a couple of songs, but I was quite happy at that because I was like, the guy's trying his fucking best. Yeah, and, and well, shit on him for that. You you turn up. That's a really interesting one, though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because it's like you you turn up to see Devon Townsend perform, mm -hmm. and you assume that's going to be songs, but worse, the worst happens, and he's unable to do that. Would you be happy? If he just stood on stage, you know, talked to you, told you stories, um, took the time to come around and shake everybody's hand and take pictures with you. That would be really cool. But yeah. it's actually happened to me twice when I went to see oh, him that okay. he's had technical difficulties. <laughs> and it's not that they couldn't play without the tracks. Right. I think it's just there's that much of the music is based in the tracks mm. that it would be quite a bare performance. Yeah. And I also think that Devin potentially runs all his stuff through a DAW and has it all like sequenced and midi tracked sure. so that it changes amps for him and right. settings and look with whatever he's using an axe effects or a Kemper or whatever yeah. um, or a midi controller so I think a lot of that's already um, automated sure and that would make a big difference for his yeah. performance in that regard um, could be wrong maybe just jumping to it but as I say twice I've seen him twice they've had technical issues and twice there's been a period of the set where they've not seen them yeah and then the other side of the coin is when I went to the retinal circus that was just something else man Something else. Yeah, he's um I nearly cried when Jared Simon came on stage. <laughs> I'm leaving kidding. He's uh he's incredible. I'm just such such a big fan. Um did I show you any of the the last the, the Blu ray? The last one that just came out? No. Oh, I've got that in the house. That's what one's that? Is this the one we were watching that on it? And it's done in like green screened? 
No, no, this was the the tour of the where I went to see him in Glasgow. Oh, right, okay. No, they, filmed the, they filmed the London show for that. And That'd have been pretty swag. Very good, very good. Is uh, that the one where he had the set list of fan favourites, the second part of it? No, it was no. the Empath World Tour. Right. So, played a lot of I stuff never really listened to a lot of Empath, apart from when you've had it on. Sure. I really should get back into it though, because a couple of times I listened to it, the first couple of tracks from really into it, and then I think it just gets a bit so too avant for me. It is so fucking good. Just, uh, it really, but it's one of, art's one of those really interesting things, isn't it? Where it is. you just have to be in the, you don't have to be, but if you're in the right mindset to to engage with something, it will just hit mm-hmm. you in a in a certain way. And I was having a heavy bout of depression when when that album dropped, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm not going to say it lifted me out of that, but it certainly I threw myself into it because that was it was an album that Devon wrote for that purpose mm-hmm. um and something about it just really really spoke to me um so yeah it maybe if you have a horrible fit of depression not again <laughs> that'll be the- try my best not to thanks <laughs> you'll message me and be like later i'm just having a terrible time i'll be don't worry don't worry i'll bring devon town to the empire for <laughs> <laughs> every cloud every <laughs> that's it you'll have a nice time yeah i'm not making light of mental health problems <laughs> no not at all look at the state of my eyes man look at me <laughs> honestly uh okay so Main story. There was some Lucas Mann stuff that I was sent. Um, that was that was really funny, but we don't want to be giving too much attention to him. But ba- essentially, in their group, in their uh, the fan group for the Rings of Saturn stuff, someone was high, like posted memes about how dumb Lucas is, and Lucas, because his ego doesn't allow him to not, was responding to the, the these posts saying, you know, about being dropped by the record label and all the, the reasons he has so much bad press around his name is. He's trying to say, you know, every single thing that that I've done, you don't think that it's been by design. You don't think that I know that that this all this bad press. Uh, have you not noticed the correlation between all the bad press that I get and any time that I have to market something, any time I need to advertise something, it's all by design, dudes. No, no, you try and market your stuff and people take the piss out of you. That's not yeah. you designing it. That's yeah. you being a victim to your yeah. own nonsense yeah. and inability to understand that yeah. you are the joke, not the joke maker. Yeah, yeah. He he had a bunch of stuff to promote, so what did he think he'll do? Ah, oh, let's embroil myself in a lawsuit where I get accused of plagiarism. Let's do that. That that that'll be really good for business. Yep. When he's got stuff to promote, hmm, how what controversy can I bring up around my name? I know. Let's get dropped from my record label and make no comment about it. <laughs> That's entirely the, the best marketing campaign for getting your music out there. <laughs> Having the one source of getting your music out there, say no. Yeah. And and you know that the joke of you not engaging with it or commenting on it in any way, shape or form being the thing that people talk about in the comments. They're just laughing at you all the time about it. But he has the best technical death metal writer of his all of all time. That's, true. That's one of the only examples I can think of of him actually doing what he's saying. There. He's trying to drum up controversy in that sense. But he but he's bought into his own hype. And anyway, we're not talking about Lucas Man. So <sighs> Meta- though Lucas Mann will probably make an appearance on an upcoming t-shirt or at least somebody that looks like Lucas Mann I hear that he might even tie in in some way shape or form in the upcoming intro video for the show oh, that's the first I've heard of this maybe we'll be able to tell them more when it happens I know so Metallica are suing suing an insurer for damages from their postponed 2020 tour so it's more COVID news because this is the COVID show today it's a good job <laughs> that a band that obviously has enough money to sue an insurer is going to go for it not yeah. that they made enough money they're they're also releasing a whiskey. Uh, Fuck off! The black album enhanced batch of black and whiskey. So did we they do this already? Is this like a yeah, different this is batch? An enhanced version of it. Right. Okay. So it was limited edition. Oh, that sold out quite well. Let's get another limited yeah. edition version. Fuck off! Because of Can course I... we're going to talk about whiskey on this podcast. Obviously, that's exactly what I want to do today. Though, <laughs> can't wait to talk about drinking. I'm going to go in that house and make the biggest mint julep you've ever seen. I'm not going to lie. I would have a mint julep right now. Yeah. No problem, because I know it would square me up yeah. and it would taste great. <laughs> Yeah, but well, if you sat something else down in front of me, like see, see if you made me like a fucking New York sour, I would probably spew everywhere. Yeah, unfortunately, you've got to drive home, so you can't have a mint julep. Did you drive or walk over? I drove because yeah. I was a way out. Yeah, and I brought the lawnmower down for you. Got mow the lawn, fantastic. Amazon, assholes, ordered a lawnmower, didn't didn't show up when it was supposed to show up. You know why? Jeff Bezos obviously got wind that we've been slagging him. Yeah, maybe Is that that Levi Clay dickhead. What a jerk! What. <laughs> Cancel. <laughs> um, okay, let's yeah, let's let's read this story and then we'll uh, we'll let you go home to your bed. Nah, I'm not in my bed. I'm probably lying on the couch and feel sorry for myself. <laughs> but thank you. I like the I like the consideration. Uh, Metallica are suing London-based insurance market Lloyd's of London for damages from their postponed 2020 tour dates. There were a handful of shows they had booked in South America that were cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic, according to NBC Los Angeles. 
Lloyds of London has refused to compensate Metallica for the monetary losses they've endured as a result of having to postpone the tour. The six-day run was set to take place in April of 2020 in Chile, Argentina and Brazil and would have served as Metallica's first set of shows since James Hetfield's rehab stunt in 2019. Greta Van Fleet were set to be the opening act. That's a wild opening band for Metallica. I was just thinking that, like, how much have they paid to go in there? Yeah. Uh, or their label has. Prior to the tour, Metallica purchased a cancellation, abandonment and non-appearance insurance policy in case of any potential postponement or cancellations. Due to the worldwide lockdowns, the tour was postponed. However, as any insurance company will do, yeah. Lloyds of London cited the policy's communicable communicable disease exclusion and refused to reimburse the band for their losses based on an unreasonably restrictive interpretation of the policy. The suit reads... Yes, we're going to protect you for cancellations, but not actual cancellations, just the ones that we want to see are cancellations. That's just communicable disease exclusion is such a strange... Th I can see why you would put something like that in an insurance policy, but then essentially your insurance policy is worthless because if your show had to be cancelled because your singer came down with with a terrible bout of the flu and they lost their voice, or you know what I mean? Like They're just going to go, well, that's communicable disease. I think those ones might be covered, but this... They'll probably just go, act of God, we don't have to do anything because yeah. that's insurance companies over the back. Yeah, because this, I don't, I, again, not a lawyer, so I can't say Metallica have a case. Obviously, their lawyers think they have a case or they wouldn't have taken it this far. But Are you sure? Are you sure their lawyers didn't just think we've got a case of getting some really good money here? Fair point. Yeah, the only person that wins is the lawyers. Um, As always. I just want to say that surely they've got some sort of case here because it wasn't actually the disease itself that caused, that caused the show to be postponed. Was it? It was the, it's everything else. It's the logistics of being able to do it. N maybe potentially not even being allowed to enter the country because of the disease, but it's actually the government, not the disease itself that's caused the postponement. So um, I would like to think they have a case. I'm really looking forward to reading more into this because it'll be an interesting case, n what, no matter what happens, really. Yeah. Um, the band filed the lawsuit Monday, the June the 7th, the June the 7th, Monday, <laughs> June 7th, at the Los Angeles Superior Court, claiming the Lloyds of London committed a breach of contract by denying them compensation, and they are seeking unspecified damages as a result. Metallica have not yet announced the rescheduled dates for the South American tour. As of now, the only shows they've announced for 2021 are a few appearances at festivals in the fall. See the itinerary on their website. No. <laughs> but, but, regardless, uh, I don't know how I feel about this, because... I, this sounds like a shitty comment, but I think Metallica got enough money to cover those losses if it's only six dates. But does that cover all their crew and other costs? Yeah. So maybe that's not the fact that Metallica are saying we want to have made the money for us getting that income. Maybe they're just trying to cover the costs of, well, they're all the people that we've told are going to work. Sure. We've now had to pull those dates away for them. Yeah. We're still contract contracted or even obligated morally to try and help these people out because sure. everybody's suffering just now. Yeah, yeah. So for an insurance company... Surprise, surprise, to say, well, actually, we found a loophole in why we can't give you the money that you're actually entitled to. Yeah, like, Here, here's the my genuine feeling on insurance. Unless it actually is going to cover you, then it should not be put forward. And I, I think that the British model of insurance, or the UK's model of insurance, is stupid. How do you mean? Take, just take cars, for example. It's completely mandatory, but it's privatised. You, you have to have it but there are no real regulations on it, so you're going to get scalped left, right and centre, and well, then they won't actually fucking cover you very often. So I, I do agree with you fully, um, but it, it is highly regulated. It is high, in fact, the, the the way the system is changing, uh, the way the system works is changing in January, I believe. Mm -hmm. They're changing the insurance system so it will now be illegal for new customers to be able to get a better deal than old customers. Right, cool. So um, how long does it took to get to that stage? Oh, it's taken, it's taken yeah, absolutely forever. And, and what's going to happen then? Is everybody's premiums going to be dropped? Or are they going to start charging more? That, well... It's not a solution. <laughs> Last year, they done the same thing with Sheila's Wheels, right? right? We can't be giving preferential yeah, yeah. pricing to women. So everybody's going to get charged more now. Yep. That's not a solution. That's just money in your pocket. <laughs> I see the problems. I totally get that there, there are caveats that, are, that yeah, make yeah. it unfair and it make the... The, the, um, the government stepped in fair and said, trade you, laws. you can't... You can't charge women less for for insurance because that's sexist. So I wouldn't expect the company to then go, okay, we're going to lose money on on this. But the fact is, they continually and consistently scalp people. Oh yeah, yeah totally. That's my like, point. I hate insurance. I I think insurance is the biggest scam known to man uh, because of course insurance. It is. Si and I'm sure I've even said this on the podcast before. Insurance simply should buy you one thing and one thing only, and that's peace of mind. 
And the, if the first thing that happens when you need to claim on your insurance is panic. Mm -hmm. Am I actually going to get what I'm what I'm entitled to? Hundred percent. And every single time, if even if you don't, uh, sorry, even if you do get your money or with the compensation that you're you're after, it's so much more effort than it needs to be. Every single fucking time. The other thing that pisses me off about insurance is the fact that you will insure for X value and you never get X value. Yeah. Cars again. So I've insured my <laughs> car for the value. What's the current value of the car? Right. Cool. Yeah. Or when the crash two weeks later, we'll actually revalue your car at like 40%. Yeah. What? Because you've got to give me the value of it after it's been crashed? <laughs> no, I'm paying you based on the amounts that you asked for, sure. based on the value that we've agreed. Yeah. You can't just change that because you yeah. want to. And then they go, well, we can, and that's yeah. the end of it. Yeah, I got lucky in that one because when my car was written off, um, they gave me the book value of the car mm -hmm. because someone else someone else wrote it off. And it's like, well, I can if I tried to sell that car, I wasn't getting that for it. So... <laughs> I did all right on that one. I'm not saying it always shits people over, but sure. it, by design it tries to. I got I got lucky in that example. <laughs> exactly. But, but to be fair, mm -hmm. that's been a ball like two because the other insurance company have been not communicating with my insurance company or what there's all these issues around it. So my insurance company haven't been paid essentially mm -hmm. for it. So they need to take the other company to court. Now I left the insurance company. I'm not with them anymore. And this was the best part of a year ago now, mm -hmm. but they have been contacting me and other solicitors have been contacting me telling me that the, the other insurance company are going to be taken to court, but it needs to be done in my name. I need to participate in it. It needs to be me that's the acting. And, and I'm like, fuck right off. I've paid this you to do this. literally nothing to do with me anymore. I am not, I don't pay you anything. I didn't agree to any of this when I signed up for it. I know maybe it's in, in small print, but but no, like just no. That's again, part of the insidious system. I didn't even of have it. the crash. It was my wife, my ex-wife. <laughs> it's, it's just bizarre, isn't it? Like, yeah. And it doesn't matter how many times. Oh, but it's in the terms and conditions and blah blah blah. Like, how many people do you know that reads every single word of a terms and conditions? <laughs> that it's, South Park episode. Ah, uh, that's the, the human does sentai it pad. Read? Human sentai pad. They did not read the terms and conditions. Yeah. Um, I, that's I, a revolting episode, that isn't is, it? Yeah. I um. Fish pace, isn't it? Was it fish heads and asparagus, yeah. isn't it? I'm a raven, you stan. <laughs> I'm um. Stupid. I'm in a strange position in my life at the moment, right? Where I'm 32 now, and I keep getting targeted ads for life insurance. Um, I actually have life insurance now. Not happy about it, but happy about it. And to me, life insurance is the biggest scam of all of them. What do you get for it? Exactly. I get to pay in for somebody else to get money. I mean, that is just insurance on the back, yeah. to be fair. <laughs> it's just insurance that's aimed at meant to be giving you something. Yeah. But I agree with you that, that especially a point of it's supposed to give you peace of mind, but nine times out of ten, it does not. Yeah. It's just, it's bizarre. I think the American model of insurance is much better because it's personal insurance and that's it. You don't get your own insurance, you're fucked if something happens. Yeah. I like that. That's more based on actual reality as opposed to, right, you bought a car, you could be the world's best yeah. driver in the world. You feel that way? Health insurance? No, I'm not saying health insurance. <laughs> let's, let's let's take a wee step back, thank you. Don't put words in my mouth. Uh, car insurance. We don't need health insurance here. We're lucky yeah. in that regard. Oh, so is that the, the case in the States? You don't have to have car insurance? Is that... I think you are... It's not legally obligated. You should have personal insurance. But if somebody's uninsured you and you haven't been insured yourself, you just won't be covered. Whereas if you're insured and someone else isn't, you still get covered, but your insurance premiums might go up because you can't claim against someone else. Okay. Whereas here, if you drive with no insurance, then you get fucked. Yeah. If you get caught. I mean, I, I like that system. I like the getting fucked, yeah. but yeah. I don't like <laughs> having to... My, my payment's being continually judged on other people. Yeah. In other people's circumstances and then tied to fucking shares in the stock market and, oh, the prices vary every day and blah, blah, blah. Like, what, you might charge me more money for me having been a driver with more experience and evidence of being a good driver for an extra year at a time and every time you want to take more money off me? No. Are you bet surely your insurance premiums are going down year on year. No. No? Not with the review. Well, when I shop about, they are. Sure. But renewal that's prices. That's what they are trying to, that's what the new legislation but is how trying how long has this been going oh, on? Oh, no, you're totally right. Totally and right. It, again, this idea of a competitive market only works if people are being competitive. Yep. When you're a first-time driver and you're like, fucking brilliant, that's me, I passed my test, I'm going to get a wee runabout and it won't cost me much and your insurance is four times the value of the car yeah. with a £750 excess. Yeah. How does that work? How's that fair? You're well, just penalising the poor yet again. I don't know about penalising the poor. You're penalising dangerous... Da you're statistically a lot more likely to cause an accident if you're a, a newly passed driver and need to... Uh, 
if you're going to cause an accident, you're going to have to pay for damages to other parties. So I get I get the rationale behind it, but but I am absolutely not going to pay more than the value of my vehicle for insurance for oh. it for a year to not get yeah. anything back, and in the event of a claim, not get sure. anywhere near the value of the no, car anyway. I didn't have to do that because I didn't start driving until I was Jesus. No, you didn't have to do that because I very. 28? Intelligently told you to put somebody else on your insurance <laughs> as your second driver. Yeah. But even then, like, it still... It, like, Melissa's going to have to get car insurance soon. She's mm. 35 years old. She, her insurance premiums are not going to be that of a 17-year-old boy's. <laughs> but, uh, again, doesn't make sense because that 17-year-old driver could be the best driver on the planet. Could be. That could have been a young person that's been driving cars, yeah, private land, for yeah, five years. Yeah really into driving great when it comes to like road awareness and safety could know the highway code inside out could be the best driver on the planet but they've been judged on other people's merits i'm gonna pull this back onto guitars that's that to still continuing to talk insurance okay because it's just continues to be the case right so i have home insurance mm -hmm. if something goes wrong in my house you know I, all of my guitars are gone you just know every single one of them's gone i'm never seeing them again i'm never getting anything close to what my guitars are worth because you need specialist insurance for, for high value items. Um, it's entirely possible the home insurance might even, they might look at how many guitars I have and then go, oh, we're going to have to actually void your home insurance. Like, <laughs> could you want to send fire with yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You want to send a parcel somewhere? Sorry, you want to send a guitar somewhere? Good luck fucking insuring that guitar. Because it, it's That's just, already how it is. Yeah. There's it's, not a single courier in the UK that actually knows how to ship a guitar and then. Oh, you shipped it in five hard cases that were made of adamantium. It's still not covered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Safest thing in the world. Somehow we managed to break it, and that's somehow your fault. <laughs> it's just we lost it in transit. Tough shit. Yeah, I'm paying for. Oh, if I'm paying for it, I'll just we'll close it with this, right? If I'm paying for insurance, I should be paying for peace of mind. That's what the word actually means. You yeah. are being insured that it yeah. will be fine. <laughs> so that should be it, and it just is never the fucking case. I hate it. I ho in this case, in Metallica's case, I was concerned what you were were saying is that well, Metallica have enough money. This just doesn't actually really matter to them in the grand scheme of things. Of There's only not. a few shows, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. For their own cost, maybe. And I'm talking about their personal income from yeah. it. What they would make in I, terms of. I don't like Metallica profit. as a band. I don't like them as a as a group. I especially don't like Lars Ulrich, etc., etc. So I'm just going to come out and say that, but. Very brave of you. Boys have got integrity, right? They followed through the Napster thing because they thought that they were doing the right things for themselves and the rest of the music industry. And in mm -hmm. this particular case as well, they'll see this through to the end and there's every chance that this could be massively helpful for other people in the music industry that have found themselves in similar situations but don't have the money to take a massive insurance company like this to court. Yes. So, on you sell, boys. Aye, if you're doing it for the right reasons and you do it well. Hundred percent. Fingers right. crossed it, it pans out right. So that's all I have. That's all I have prepared for us today. Unfortunately, Mike, I'm I'm sorry, everybody, for uh, the disappointment. Of course, I, it's not it's not everything. There's always more. There's always a little bit more. For example, did they know? This show is brought to you by our friends over at Ormsby Guitars. We want to remind you guys that there is still time to get involved in the upcoming Run 16 guitars. Those include these incredible hypes available in five new colours. That Dragon Burst is absolutely stunning. You can also get your hands on one of the Metal X's, again available in a range of finishes. My personal pick has to be these headless V's, absolutely outrageously cool. Imagine one of those in an 8-string, I absolutely love these. And finally, the Ando San Signature model, available in 6, 7 and 8-string availability. Go and check them out at Ormsby's website right now. This show is also brought to you by our friends over at Rev Amplification, a one-stop shop for all of your tonal needs. Head on over to their website to check out their range of lunchbox amplifiers, both the D20 and G20, 20-watt 20 amplifiers with built-in two-notes torpedo technology so you can record direct into your computer. If that doesn't suit, you can also check out one of their highly popular G2, 3 and 4 pedals, giving you that trademark Rev tone in a stomp box. Incredible tones, I use these myself. And finally, you may notice in the back of these videos, a Rev Generator 120, an absolute masterclass in modern electric guitar tones. Check it out at their site now. So as always, a huge thanks to our friends and family over at both Ormsby Guitars and Rev Amplification. Those guys are incredible. Please do go and check them out. 
uh, you know, my days are now going to be full of me just sitting and playing plugged into that. I've got an amp, so it's silly for me to be so excited about a new amp, but no, that's just how things are, isn't it? If you have something new, it just inspires you to play. That's why I keep buying new guitars. To me, sure, buying new strings would be easier, but... No, it wouldn't. You wouldn't need to remortgage the house. If I need to put new strings on a guitar, I could just buy a new guitar, and then I've got the added inspiration of a new guitar to play. And that's that's the original way of doing it, is it not? You used to not be able to buy replacement strings. I think back in the fifties, maybe the sixties. That can't be the no. That's no not a chance. Bill told me that. Not a fucking And I don't chance. think he was taking the piss. No, he's taking the piss. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I definitely did. <laughs> okay, you know best. Fifties will say we couldn't buy guitar strings. Okay. I'm just. Kidding. I'm going to let that one sit just for a second so people in the comments can get involved in that one. Because what I did on the last show that I thought was great fun was putting those polls up. I am sure you did. Every time I tried to type, a poll appeared and it would delete whatever I wrote in the fucking box. Oh, okay, I didn't realise it Every does that. time, <laughs> you bastard. Maybe only me because I'm admin on the page. Maybe. Can you do polls as an admin? I have no idea. I've never tried. Uh, you're working tomorrow, aren't you? Yes. So you won't be on the on the thing, but... Don't um, Yeah, no worries. Um, you should try doing polls because they're they're fun. I'm going to put a poll up and see if people think guitar polls that you <laughs> if you could buy guitar strings in the 50s or 60s. It's not about a poll. Google it. I'd fucking work it out that way. But Bill told me that it used to be that genuinely that's why people used to boil their strings because getting a hold of replacement strings was so hard and so almost impossible that people used to do that to keep them basically alive. And if you broke a string, you were almost fucked. Now, my my understanding, I know the boiling strings, the like boiling strings thing, that comes from bass players, right? Trying and to keep the strings fresh. massively cost prohibitive for, for bass players to, to be changing their strings. Cost prohibitive to be a bass player? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my favourite, should I, should I do that, the, the classic joke? I'm going to tell that joke for anybody that hasn't, uh, anybody, the, the wee, the, it's wee Finley starts his, starts his bass lessons and he goes in for, uh, for his first bass lesson, he comes home from uh, from his lesson that day, and uh, you say to him, "So, what did you learn today on the on the bass?" And he says, "Well, I can play the open string, I can play the first fret. Um, that's what my teacher showed me though today." And you go, "Good, good on you. Well, uh, you know, we'll keep we'll keep you going." So he goes back next week, and he comes back from his lesson, and you go, "What did you learn today on the bass?" And he goes, "I can play the second fret and the third fret now. It's so sounding pretty good." And you went, "Excellent. Let's keep going with this." Comes back after the next lesson, he's like, "I've learned the the fourth fret and the fifth fret," and. Uh, sweet you like offer another lesson and he comes back next week and you're like what did you learn in your lessons today and he went lessons i've not got time for lessons i'm too busy gigging fantastic shape part we used to say that in the show up all the time as well but i would just come in here and uh, some some cheeky bastard come in here and tell me there's four chords <laughs> lion cunt <laughs> shape part isn't it? i actually tried to call um Guitar, guitar, out on that on uh, on social media, but they just uh, ignored my post. Of course, Popped. they um they posted a uh, a thread on Instagram saying uh, tips for becoming a better rhythm guitar player and like saying that all guitar players are, we've got to be able to play rhythm. You should be better rhythm guitar players, etc. And I was looking through it. It went scroll to see what your tips are, and I scrolled through them. And the first one is make sure that you learn more chords. Okay, great bit of advice, you know. And it said you know l learning chords is an important part of every guitar player's thing you need to know chord voicing so if you if you're practicing try and learn a new chord voicing try and um learn a chord that you already know but learn to play in a different place etc mm -hmm. learn more about chords great bit of advice different positions and versions okay. picture that the person was holding not any chord i recognize <laughs> i could name it sure because you can name any group of notes but i just had to respond and go great advice guys let's test you on it what the fuck is that chord in that? <laughs> uh, can we tell this guy to follow the advice too? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking idiots. That is, man. So we, what was it? Uh, you know, uh, Crossfire? Big Tams band? Sure. The only band I've ever seen that play in a pub with a capacity of about 80 people and bring a full stack and make it. Yeah. Right, like wild. <laughs> but they're like old school rock and rollers. Kind of give them in, but plenty of fucking uh, respect. But Tams' famous line was, he chords in a dream. <laughs> like that. Country is uh, three chords in the truth, right? So, yeah. Oh, I think that's what you said. Sorry, three chords in the truth, but it's no country, it's rock and roll. But fair enough, I've, I've fucked the joke. I mean, yeah, it was better than better than my joke still, so. Uh, no, I don't think so. Mike, until next time. Parasite, more and water, please. <laughs>